I'm going to abbreviate this to so she, yeah, because it's so fundamental. Okay, so what does this say? Suppose we have f from omega into this thing. Omega is open as always. Omega is open. So I'm going to forget to say that sometimes. But we're always going to be talking about open omega. And f is holomorphic on omega. Then, what do we have? We have that uh, if the ball V R of Z0 is contained within omega, then f of z is equal to 1 over 2 pi i, the integral around the boundary of the ball around z0 of f of zeta, uh, zeta minus z, like this, d zeta. Okay, so first time I saw this, I, uh, I was a little bit uh, uh, nonplussed because it looks kind of a complicated formula. Uh, initially. Let's point out a few things. Firstly, we have Z0, this is radius R, but this formula holds true for any Z inside this, so not Z0 itself, but any Z. So what we're doing is we're integrating around the boundary of the ball like this, yeah. And considering this expression right here, yeah, and it turns out we get this thing. And um, as you, as you, as you are aware, if we integrate something, it's a regularizing thing, right? It makes things nicer to integrate things. Yeah. As if we differentiate, typically things get get worse. They get more complicated. So when you have something where you can express your function at some point in terms of integrating around your function or on something else, that is a very regularizing property. And that's a very strong property. And that's what we're going to see later on. So there's going to be a host of corollaries from this formula right here. Yeah. Before we go into it, though, I want to try and illustrate what it's saying. So we're going to do this in the following way. So what is this saying? This is actually one of the key theorems of the entire course. All right, let's take the very special case when we just put z equals z0 at the center, okay? Take z equals z0, yeah? So then this formula goes like this, and let's write out actually what this actually is, okay? So, Let's put in the parameterization and see what we get. So that means, as a special case, we have this theorem. We have this true fact, f of zeta, zeta minus z0. OK, and let's put a parameterization in. So let's take z of t equals z0 plus t uh, plus r. e to the i t, okay? Then z prime of t is equal to i r uh, e to the i t, like this. And then what does this formula say? Star. Then star says that f of z0 equals 1 over 2 pi i. And now we're going to integrate using our parameterization. So we integrate 0 to 2 pi. And then this is f of z0 plus r e to the i t. Uh, this thing here, because uh, the way you find this, this thing here is now going to be uh, 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 just r e to the i t like this. 
zeta, since we're doing respect to zeta. Yeah. And z prime we've calculated it's this, it's just i uh e to the i times t, and now we're integrating the t. Yeah? So all we've done is use the definition of integration on, on curves with this specific parameterization. Yeah? And then we see that we have some cancellations. This cancels with this. Yeah? And the i will cancel with this. So what this gives us is just, oops. is just this, 1 over 2 pi, integral from 0 to 2 pi of f of z0 plus uh, e to the i t uh, dt, like this. Yeah. Everybody happy? Oh, but this is wrong. Now this is correct. Everybody happy? Cool. All right, let's write out what this is. This is 1 over 2 pi. Integral from 0 to 2 pi. And let's break this up into the real and imaginary parts. So the real of f integrated like this, z plus the i t plus the imaginary part of f z plus r e to the i t like this dt and let's break up the integral that's 1 over 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 pi of the real part of f z plus r e to the i t dt plus i times uh, 2 pi like this, i times 0 to pi imaginary part of f z plus r e to the i t dt. Yeah? Cool. Now, let's write this like this. Let's do this. Let's write this thing as 1 over 2 pi r, integral from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, actually, I want to rewrite everything. Let's just adapt the previous formula. I'm going to write this as 2 pi r, 2 pi r, and I'm going to put an r in here. I'm going to write this as, I'm going to break this up, and I'm going to write this as plus i over 2 pi r. And I'm going to put an R over here. DT. Okay, so the stuff in the brackets here is now just a real integral, i.e. an integral of a real valued function over a curve. Yep. Yep. And what is this R? Well, this R is the absolute value of the derivative of the parameterization. Yeah? Yeah? So I can replace this R just by absolute value of z of t, or z prime of t. So this thing is the same as absolute value z prime of t dt, and the same thing here. This thing here is absolute value z prime of t, like this. Yeah? Give me a thumbs up if you're with me. Okay. So, cool. So, what does that mean? Well, 
if we look at this expression here, right? What are we looking at? What kind of integral is this thing here? What kind of integral? It's the integral around a curve, right? Yeah? And we're using our parameterization z, yeah? So this thing is nothing other than 1 over 2 pi r. And then we're just going to write integral around the boundary of the curve, the r of z0, the real part of f. And if you did multivariable calculus, you probably, um, you probably saw something like ds, or something like this, to indicate it's a one-dimensional line integral across the curve, right? But later you're going to learn that there's a correct notion for this, which is called Hausdorff measure. And this is one-dimensional Hausdorff measure. So we're going to write this thing like this. This is what this thing is over here. It's the one-dimensional integral of a real-valued function over a curve. Yeah, what you learned from multivariable calculus. Yeah, do a recap over here. I'll explain, complete the expression first of all, and then I'll put the recap. So that's this thing, and this guy is this. The same, same, same thing, right? It's 1 over 2 pi r, and then it's the integral around the boundary of this thing, just this thing, this imaginary function, or the imaginary values of f. And then I'm going to write the h1 of x like this. Okay, that is what this thing is equal to. Now here's a little recap on integrating on curves from multivariable calculus. So given curve gamma contained within R2, right? Then you've learned that if z from a to b into gamma is the parameterization, then length of gamma is equal to the integral from a to b z prime of t dt. You guys all know that. You people all know that, right? And in fact, I, I get a little brief sketch of that in this class, right? And then from that, it's pretty easy to see that if we actually integrate a function over the curve, so we have some function f defined on our curve gamma in R2, then the way to do that is as follows. So the integral over the curve gamma f right, the h1, is the integral from a to b of f of z of t, z prime of t, dt. Yeah? And when f is equal to 1, then that thing is just the length of the curve. Yeah? Yeah? So that stuff should be recap for you. Yeah? And if it's not, go back in your multivariable lecture notes and then look, at, look again at this and you'll see that this is true. And this formula is natural because the point of this absolute value of z prime of t is to take out the, the scaling from the expression. Okay? Yeah? Takes out the scaling from the expression. Because we want this thing to be independent of, of whatever parameter, whatever parameterization we've chosen. Yeah? And this factor here takes care of that for us. Yeah? Cool. Is this coming back to you people? A little bit. And if not, again, look back at multivariable calculus. We can look at our multivariable calculus. I'm happy to answer questions about multivariable calculus if anything's unclear, because we, we need that stuff. And that is all we're doing here, right? That's just what we're doing here. We have a real valued function. Yeah. We have a parameterization around a curve in the plane given by z. Yeah. So this thing is the same as this thing. That's what a real valued function defined on a curve in the plane is defined to be. Yeah. And the same for this thing. Cool. And then what is this thing? 1 over 2 pi r, that is just the length of the circle, right? Of radius r. So this thing here is actually the average of the real part of f over the circle of radius r. Yeah? 
And the same for this. This is the average of the imaginary part over the circle of radius r around z0. Yeah? Yeah? Sometimes, well, not sometimes, we have this notation. This thing is the average of f. This thing is defined to be equal to the integral from a to b of f dx over b minus a. This is the average. This is common notation. So I could just write this like this. This is the average of the real part on the circle plus i times the average of the imaginary part on the circle. Okay, so if we believe Cauchy integral formula, what it's actually saying in the special case when we say z to be equal to z0 is that f yeah, is equal to this thing, the average of the real part of the circle plus i times the average of the imaginary part of the circle. Yeah? And since f itself is just equal to the real part and z0 plus i times the imaginary part, at z0, yeah? it's therefore saying that this thing, oops, is equal to this thing. And this thing is equal to this thing. Yeah? And when you have a function where if you integrate around the boundary of the circle and you end up having, if you integrate around the boundary of the circle and you divide by the length, that thing is just the same as the value of the function at the center of the circle. That thing is called the mean value of property. Yeah? So let's think about what that says. If we have a function that satisfies this, it means that, think of a, a function from R2 into R as a mountain landscape, right? That means whenever you take a point, you take some circle around the point and you take the height of the mountain as you move around the circle. So sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, but the average of the height around the circle is the same as the height in the center of the circle. That's what it means. Yeah? It's a very particular, very specific property. Yeah? That's the mean value property. Yeah? So part of the Cauchy integral formula, when we just look at what it says when z equals z0, and we look at what it says for the real and the imaginary parts of our function f, it says that they have this very specific property, the mean value property, that when we average around the boundary of a, of a ball, it's, the value is exactly equal to the center. Yeah? Which to me is much more meaningful than this expression right here. 